Good Friday evening and welcome to the NCW Life Evening News. I'm Grant Olson. Before we get to tonight's top stories, let's take a quick look outside our weather window. A nice part about today, a lot less wind. We saw lots of sunshine out there this afternoon. Temperatures about where they should be for this time of year. Made for a beautiful shot looking down at the Wenatchee Valley from our uh, SkyFi Tower camera up on Wenatchee Heights. And as we take a look at the rest of the weekend, more of the same on the way. We might see just a little bit more wind on Saturday and then mostly cloudy Sunday. Not so much dry for us late. And we'll talk about that. And here is why a big storm. We've talked about it all week moving in on Monday. We could see up to 24 inches of snow over Stevens Pass Monday into Tuesday. And here, rain with lots of wind and we'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on. Now a few of the stories we're following for you tonight. 14 firefighters from several districts spent about two hours putting out a three-acre brush fire Thursday on McNeil Canyon Road that appears to have been ignited by a car accident. A new report from the Washington State Auditor confirms former Douglas County Treasurer Natalie Marks fell behind in paying $6.3 million in federal payroll tax. Another Chelan County Commissioner candidate from 2018 has said he will be running for the position being vacated by current Commissioner Bob Boogard. But first, our top story tonight. A 66-year-old Muckleteo man was killed this week in a climbing accident on Dragon Tail Peak, about 15 miles southeast of Leavenworth. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office said they were contacted by Richard Thurmer's wife on Monday, saying her husband had gone solo climbing in the Enchantments and she hadn't heard from him for 24 hours. Thurmer was an accomplished climber who had scaled the highest peaks on all seven continents. A sheriff's deputy located Thurmer's vehicle near the Bridge Creek campground and left a note asking him to call the Sheriff's Office when he returned. Thurmer's wife again contacted the sheriff's office on Tuesday, saying she still hadn't heard from him and hadn't seen or hadn't he hadn't returned home that day as had been planned. The Chelan County Sheriff's Office search and rescue team organized a Wednesday morning search and at 11.15 a.m., a motionless person was seen from a search helicopter in the Dragon Tail Park area. The sheriff's office said high winds in the area prevented the helicopter from landing, but at 2.30, a ground rescue crew arrived at the scene and confirmed it was Thurmer. He was pronounced dead at the scene. Responders reported he appeared to have fallen from several hundred feet. In other news, 14 firefighters from several districts spent about two hours putting out a three-acre brush fire yesterday on McNeil Canyon Road that appears to have been ignited by a car accident. A Rondo Fire Department Chief Jim Oatley said about 2 p.m. a male driver lost control of a minivan and went off the roadway. The hot exhaust pipe on the vehicle apparently ignited grass and that fire was quickly spread by gusty winds with flames reportedly as high as 10 feet. The fire department said the driver declined treatment at the scene and it's not known if he was injured. Firefighters were able to prevent the fire from spreading to the minivan and a second alarm was canceled after a shift in winds enabled them to gain control of the blaze. The Douglas County Sheriff's Office is still investigating the fire. Well, a new report from the Washington State Auditor confirms former Douglas County Treasurer Natalie Marks fell behind in paying $6.3 million in federal payroll tax before county commissioners ejected her from office last year. The delayed payment of the taxes for both the county and for Eastmont and Bridgemont Bridgeport schools cost about $100,000 in IRS late fees. The audit also finds that Marx's office did not appropriately reconcile its financial statements throughout 2020. Marx accepted responsibility for the errors last August and commissioners removed her from office in September. She was never accused of criminal wrongdoing. Felicia Rosales was appointed to the treasurer's post in December. The county says it's taking steps to ensure those tax and accounting oversights won't happen again. Well, another Chelan County Commissioner candidate from 2018 has said he will be running for the position being vacated by current Commissioner Bob Bugert. 
Zachary Miller of Plain announced on social media yesterday he will be running again for the District 2 seat. Last week, businessman Sean Smith of Kashmir announced his candidacy. Smith was narrowly defeated in the 2018 general election by Boogert. Miller, the owner of Miller Stoneworks and Leavenworth native, did not advance past the primary in 2018, receiving 491 votes out of more than 7,500 cast. Well, when we come back, Chelan High School Principal Brad Wilson was hired yesterday as the new superintendent of the Lake Chelan School District. Thursday was a big day for Wenatchee-based Goodfellow brothers with Dan, Steve, and Chad Goodfellow first being named Grand Marshals of the 2022 Apple Blossom Grand Parade. And later that night, the company received the Business of the Year Award at the Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce Banquet. An infestation of parasites and invaded Chelan Douglas fir trees has collapsed entirely. And a garden of pinwheels is spinning on the lawn of the Chelan County Courthouse this week. I'm Grant Olson and you're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Introducing Alpine Air Man. Because every home needs a superhero to eliminate poor indoor air quality, send inefficient operating equipment packing, and cut high energy bills down to size. For heating or cooling and equipment replacement, turn to the experts and the superheroes at Carrier and Alpine Air. We offer the best deals on high efficiency Carrier products, along with friendly, knowledgeable service and incredible savings to fit your budget. I'm John Divis from Wenatchee Dental Arts, and I like to think myself as a comprehensive dentist. We are an office that treats people comprehensively for their dental problems. We do a lot of general dentistry in a broad sense. We don't send everything out. Uh, things that we have the ability to do in the office, we like to keep in the office and under one roof and keep things as complication free as possible. You can come to one place and have all their dental needs taken care of. Welcome back. In another news, Chelan High School Principal Brad Wilson was hired yesterday as the new superintendent of the Lake Chelan School District. Wilson has been principal of the high school for the past six years and prior to that was Chelan Middle School Principal. Earlier this year, he was named State, State High School Principal of the Year by the Association of Washington School Principals. Wilson replaces Barry DePauli, who is retiring at the end of June. Community forums were held earlier this week for both Wilson and the other finalists, Mount Sai High School Principal John Belcher. The district will now negotiate a contract with Wilson that is expected to be approved by the school board at its April 12th meeting. Well, Thursday was a big day for Wenatchee-based Goodfellow Brothers with Dan, Steve, and Chad Goodfellow first being named Grand Marshals of the 2022 Apple Blossom Grand Parade. And later that night, the company received the Business of the Year Award at the Wenatchee Valley Chamber of Commerce Banquet. Together for Youth was named the Chamber's Nonprofit of the Year. Goodfellow Brothers, a general contracting company, was established more than 100 years ago in Wenatchee and now has offices in Washington, Oregon, California, and Hawaii. Senior Vice President Dan Goodfellow put the praise on the company's employees as he accepted the Business of the Year Award. Of course, thank the Chamber um, for all of the fantastic work you do and your presentations here tonight. It gave me a, a sense of what everyone is really doing. Um, not every chamber in every community is, is fantastic, and, and this one is fantastic. Um, I'm certainly accepting this award on behalf of all of our employees. Um, I know they're very proud, and as uh, a matter of fact, part of our company mission statement is to be the contractor of choice in the communities in which you live and work. And each of our employees really do live up to that here in Wenatchee. Um, one of our programs that we're most proud of is matching donation program and any employee that wants to make a uh, donation to a charity or anything that's near and dear to them, uh, we as a company will match that donation and, and we really like that one because it allows us to reach some areas of importance uh, that may have otherwise been overlooked. And um, we're real proud of that program and, the, and everyone that works for us really uses it and um, 
and it, and it's really it's really nice to be able to get some money to some of those areas that otherwise may not have seen some. And we also encourage anyone in any of our companies and any of our in our regions um, and communities to donate to the uh, local uh, little league or football field. Um, we they'll maybe go grade a church. They don't have to ask executives. They know that they can just go out and do whatever they feel needs to be done in each community in which we in which we work, and um, and that's really big for all of us. An infestation of parasites that invaded Chelan Douglas fir trees has collapsed entirely. The annual forest health report from the Washington Department Counties of Natural Resources finds the tussock moth, which defoliated about 6,500 acres around Blewett Pass in 2018 and 2019, caused no new damage in 2021. But other pests like pine bark beetles and spruce beetles continued to harm native trees in Chelan and Okanagan counties. The aerial survey was unable to assess about three access rather about three million acres out of the state's 22 million acres of forest due to the prevalence of last year's wildfires. A garden of pinwheels is spinning on the lawn of the Chelan County Courthouse this week. The Chelan Douglas CASA program puts up the pinwheel garden each year to raise awareness of child abuse in the community. CASA provides volunteer help for abused children who are involved in the child welfare process in Chelan and Douglas County Courts. The Pinwheel Garden also serves as a reminder that April is Child Abuse Prevention Month. You're watching the NCW Life Evening News. Coming up next, tonight's feature story and your complete local weather forecast. That and much more still to come on the NCW Life Evening News. Please stay with us. Hello, my name is Brian Breath, Fire Chief for Chelan County Fire District 1, and I just wanted to talk about how amazing our Rivercom team is. They are intentional, purposeful, and skillful in everything they do, and they are the best at what they do. How they prepare, how they handle the caller, how they coordinate the emergency services, and how they push themselves to be the best. This is the kind of spirit that our Rivercom telecommunicators have. Our community needs you, we need you, we admire you, you're our lifeline. It's gone on four decades of doing business in the Wenatchee Valley. And I want people to know that it matters. It matters to me that people choose to do business with us. It matters that people trust us, you know, trust us. That matters more than anything. Welcome back to the NCW Life Evening News. River recreation is a natural part of summertime in north central Washington. But in Leavenworth, it's led to conflicts between river users and property owners along those riverbanks. Chelan County Commissioner Bob Bugert hosted a town hall meeting last night where the pastime of tubing was on the agenda. In tonight's feature story, NCW Life's Jefferson Robbins was there and has more. In summer 2020, Chelan County put observers along the Wenatchee and Icicle Rivers to count how many people used those streams, whether on float tubes, rafts, or paddle boards. The county's natural resources director, Mike Caputa, found those numbers surprising. There were a lot of people putting in. I think in one six-hour period, we had something like 1,600 tubers, 1,700 tubers, right? So it was, I think it confirmed what people were seeing, but I, I was surprised by that number. I, wouldn't, I would have guessed maybe five or six hundred. The report that emerged from that research found that eight launch sites on the Wenatchee and Icicle see heavy use, especially in July, with an average of 1,100 people floating the Icicle, and in August, with more than 1,500 people floating the Wenatchee on a daily basis. Property owners and residents along the banks have raised concerns about litter, noise, parking, and safety. Of the three to five drowning deaths reported in Chelan County each year, Many occur on the Leavenworth Reach. In response to the traffic, Leavenworth's Chamber of Commerce started a River Ambassador Program to encourage people to use the rivers responsibly. In 2021, the Chamber organized a training program and put volunteer ambassadors at six riverside locations over nine weekends. 
from the Leavenworth Hatchery to Barn Beach. And basically how it works is a nonprofit organization um, gets to sign up for the application to be a recreation ambassador. And that nonprofit has to put together a team of volunteers that will work one weekend in the summer. And by doing that service grant, that, prof, that nonprofit this year can make up to $2,000 uh, per weekend. So it's a way for us to get people out there, educating people about river use, but also as a passive way for nonprofits um, to make, um, to use it as a, as a fundraiser. But Caputa says the county is a long way from creating any kind of regulatory framework that would control recreational access on the river, something that would require state, federal, and city involvement as well. Other communities have put in permit or reservation systems to keep river traffic manageable. I think that's probably the kind of system we would see in the future. Um, what we haven't really talked about is, well, what would that look like here? Um, who would do it? Right, because we have people putting in the county, we have people putting in in the city, people putting in on the fish hatchery, and so there's you know there's lots of bureaucracy <laughs> around that we have to work through. Jefferson Robbins, NCW Life. Time now for a look at your north central Washington. Weather forecast, beautiful day today, 56 degrees, almost where we should be for this time of year. Our record is 80, 36, low temperature, 37 is normal, 26, our record low back in 2008. Sunrise this morning, 639, sunsets at 731. Let's get you quickly into our surface loop. We'll begin with tonight, mostly cloudy skies. We will see low temperatures in the upper 30s, ridge up and over the western part of the state maybe some rain showers there for saturday it'll be a nice one except for some breezy conditions in the afternoon mostly sunny skies with highs tomorrow generally in the mid 50s boy and things really begin to change as we get you into sunday and that's mainly because of this monster storm coming out of the gulf of alaska associated cold front we will see some windy conditions at times overnight rain is likely this will be our situation late in the evening on sunday all of us seeing some rain and look at this on Monday, this blue and purple 40 to 50 mile an hour wind gusts, cloudy skies, rain is likely on Monday. It will be cooler too. High temperatures on Monday, only into the lower 50s. And as we get you into Tuesday, mostly sunny skies, still a little bit breezy right here in north central Washington. Chilly, high temperatures only into the low 50s for Tuesday. And then things begin to warm up as we get you into Wednesday. High pressure building back into the uh, western United States. We'll see warmer highs for Wednesday, somewhere into the mid, maybe upper 50s for Wednesday. And boy, you're going to like Thursday. A ridge of high pressure intensifies. In fact, high pressure right over western Montana. Partly cloudy skies and warmer with high temperatures Thursday in the lower 60s. So it should be a nice one. A seven day forecast, 37 tonight, 56 Saturday. Sunday things change, rain overnight, wind and rain likely on Monday in 52. Mostly sunny, maybe a morning shower on Tuesday in 51. Mostly sunny and warmer for Wednesday in 56. And then a beautiful spring day on Thursday. Partly cloudy skies with a high temperature then of 63 degrees. And that's a look at your local weather forecast coming up next tonight's sports report with Eric Granstrom and more as the NCW Life Evening News continues right after this. a sports update on the NCW Life Channel. And a happy finally Friday. It's hard to believe that just two years ago, Haley Van Lith was playing for little old Cashmere, Washington at the state championship in Yakima.
Bernie led Kashmir to an 84 and 7 record during her four years as a Bulldog and set the high school scoring record in Washington. Van Lith now wears the number 10 for Louisville and in her two years has helped the Cardinals to a 55 win mark and a final four appearance today. 20 points. Haley Van Lith. Very rarely as Van Lith hits it and then. Future ahead of her, present not so bad either. Meanwhile, Van Lith smooth by Williams, shot clock, skinny for Van Lith, takes Dilt off the foul. So good, Pam. So good. And Michigan on a 7 0 run, all of them on free throws, broken by Van Lith, slicing in. Van Lith drew the contact from Nolan. While at Kashmir, Coach Brent Darnell's focus was on defense. Now at Louisville, the same is true, and Haley says they pride themselves on the defensive side of the ball. Regardless of whether the ball goes in on the offensive end for us, we're going to guard, um, and we're going to play defense, and we're going to rebound. And so for me, I think the emphasis is that whether they do double me, whether they blitz me, whether I get shots or not, whether I'm 0 for 10 in the first half, like I'm going to rebound, and I'm going to do everything I can on the defensive end to compete. Um, and so it is going to be an elite guard matchup, but I think it's going to be um, who's the mentally toughest to fight through the the fact that these are both elite defenses um, and not getting their feelings about what's happening on the offensive end. So um, for us and our guards, uh, we're, if, if we shoot great, amazing. But if we don't, um, we're going to go defend and make sure that they don't score either. Cardinals are going up South Carolina today in the Final Four, a team that's 33-2 and two and has been ranked number one all season long. Van Liss says she knows they're the favorite, but doesn't consider her team to be anything less. I don't think we're an underdog. You know, I think we're right where we were meant to be. I think this team deserves this opportunity, and um, we're ready to compete. But, uh, yeah, we're just, you know, the media isn't including us, this and that, blah, blah. We're not being talked about as much. We cannot control that. That is not our fault. If they want to sleep, let them sleep. Um, we'll come in and do us, and we're going to do us to the best of our ability. And we're just not going to waste energy on things that we can't control at the end of the day. And I think that we're going to focus on us and we're going to do what we need to do to compete. And they're a really great team and we're going to have to play well, but nothing that we're not capable of. Louisville and South Carolina are underway at the Target Center in Minneapolis on ESPN. The other semifinal features UConn at Stanford coming up at 630. National Championship set for Sunday at 5, also on ESPN. Men's Final Four is set for tomorrow in New Orleans. The uh, Villanova takes on the only remaining number one seed, Kansas, in the opener at 309 in the afternoon on TBS. That's followed by North Carolina and Duke. Winners will play Monday at 620, our time for the National Championship. Well, the one edgy wild head to Salmon Arm today for the first two games of the BCHL playoffs. Tonight's Game 1 starts at 7, as does Game 2 tomorrow night at the Shaw Center. The series will shift back to Wenatchee for Games 3 and 4 next Tuesday and Wednesday at the Town Toyota Center. Don't forget to listen for our buddy Arch Ecker on a call locally on 560 KPQ. You can also watch the action on Hockey TV. Well, the Seattle Kraken take on Vegas again tonight at Climate Pledge Arena. Seattle's trying to avenge a 3-0 loss to the Golden Knights just two nights ago. Puck drops at 7 o'clock on Route Sports. Northwest. Well, Chris Flexen put in another quality start to the Mariners top Cleveland 3-2 in Peoria last night. Flexen didn't get the win, but he pitched five innings, allowed one run, four hits, three strikeouts. New Mariner Adam Frazier delivered in the leadoff spot for Seattle last night. Two outs pretty much straight up is how they play. Frazier slicing drive, center field, and get down Julio can walk home. No head first slide this time. Frazier trying to stretch it, and he gets there in time. RBI double, 1-1 one, one game here in the bottom of the third in Peoria. And how about Adam Frazier? Another RBI single. Julio scores again, and it's 2-1 Mariners. Good two-strike hitting by Adam Frazier, a two for three night, two runs batted in. That thing was smoked too. Yeah, this is 97 miles an hour on the inner half of the plate, above the belt, and he barrels it up. No stride at all. Just throws his hands, solid base hit. Then with the game tied at 2-2 in the bottom of the seventh, Julio Rodriguez continued his bid to make the 40-man roster with a shot to right center field. 
So Julio gives it a ride. Deep right center field. And it is off the wall. Julio's going to get a triple. And they're going to wave him. They're going to wave him. Here he comes. Inside the park home run. Julio Rodriguez and the Mariners have a 3-2 lead. Yeah, he's making this club, Mike. He's making this club. <laughs> for number 44, Julio Rodriguez. There is some excitement about the Mariners this year. Seattle to face Colorado tonight in Scottsdale. That game starts at 640. Checking the Les Schwab prep scoreboard from yesterday. We had a few things that happened. Okanagan plastered Pateras 18-2 in baseball. Coming up today, Lake Roosevelt hosts Manson in two games. Eastmont plays a doubleheader at Moses Lake and uh, Cashmere hosting Chelan for two. Then it's uh, Wenatchee entertaining Sunnyside in the first of two games. Tomorrow, doubleheader action beginning at 11 in the morning. Omak at Cascade. Brewster hosts Tenaskin and Okanagan travels to Oroville. Waterville Mansfield plays the first of two games at Wilbur Creston at noon. Turning to the softball scoreboard from yesterday, Tenasca top Curlew 19 to 8, while Okanagan blasted Liberty Bell 30 to 1. Today, Wenatchee's playing a doubleheader at Sunnyside. Eastmont's hosting Moses Lake. Natchez Valley visiting Efreda. Coming up tomorrow, it's doubleheader day. Quincy at Cashmere, Cascade hosting Omak. Oroville visits Okanagan. Brewster takes on Tenasca to Lake Roosevelt, playing at Wilbur Queston. Also, a busy day yesterday on the soccer pitch. Let's check the Les Schwab scoreboard there. Moses Lake won a non leaguer against Othello. 2-1, Cascade blank Chelan, 2-0, Okanagan outscored Orville, 11-1, ouch. Brewster blank Manson, Bridgeport pounded Pateras, 8-0. Prep soccer takes center stage on the NCW Live channel tonight. First of two meetings this season between Wenatchee and Eastmont. Sebastian Moraga and Matt Wisen have the play-by-play. -play. Leibov to a field of the Apple Bowl is the site. 7 o'clock is our game time. All other uh, action tonight, Cashmere hosting LaSalle. Then coming up tomorrow, it is Omak visiting Manson at 11 a.m. while Tanaska takes on Bridgeport. At noon, it's Chelan at Efreda, while Quincy's traveling to Riverside. Moses Lake hosts Lake Stevens tomorrow afternoon at 2 o'clock. Finally, a big track meet this afternoon at Eastmont High School. Wildcats hosting Cascade, Central Valley, North Central, Othello, Skyline, Walla Walla, Wenatchee, all underway at the high school. That's a look at sports news. Have a great weekend, everybody. See you on Monday or for soccer tonight. Grant, back to you. Thank you very much, Eric. And now let's check in with Dan Koontz for a look at what's coming up Monday morning on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley. Dan? Thank you very much, Grant. I hope everybody has a great weekend, and we'll get you going on Monday, which looks to be, as Grant has already mentioned, a pretty wild day. Weather-wise, whatever develops uh, new forecast-wise, we'll have for you here on Monday morning. Of course, we'll be talking basketball. We'll have highlights uh, of the Louisville Cardinals ladies' team, and of course, we'll preview the national championship game on Monday night in New Orleans, and everything else you need to get your next week going, and we'll do it right here. It's a little program we'd like to call Wake Up on Anchee Valley, because you got to call it something. We're going to be live and local right here Monday morning at 7 a.m. Be sure to join us. Grant, back to you. Dan, thank you very much. And that is going to do it for our newscast tonight. By the way, happy April 1st. And for more on these stories and other news from around North Central Washington, you can find us on Facebook or our website at ncwlife.com. And remember, if you see news happening, we'd like to hear from you. You can send us an email at news at ncwlife.com or you can give us a call at 888-6295. I'm Grant Olson. Thanks for joining us and have a great weekend. NCW Life really does a great job of exposing our brand. It's a little scary at first, right? You, you're just throwing money out there hoping it comes back. Uh, and to see those results come back through and see people walk through the door and say, hey, saw your, uh, saw your TV advertisement. Um, those are the kinds of things that you see the return on. And when you look at the cost spent, uh, you know you're making a return on it. There's a huge market here and market potential, and they are a great avenue for that.